Hello again, it's been a while, but it is that time of year again. We've got three weeks till the Jersey Rally, which is a two day event. Um, yeah, so I've just put the engine back in the car. The engine's been rebuilt. Um, yeah, we went to map it last night and we had a few issues. Yeah, you can see down here. Um, yeah, I drove it really gently. No stick, well, hardly using the brakes at all. Pulled over to the side of the road when I tried pulling away again, the brakes were locked on solid. Now I did have this problem at Bovington where I'd come in off the um, stage and then I couldn't move the car because the cylinder, the um, pressure was too much on the front wheels. So you'd have to release the bleed nipple on the um, caliper and then it would free it off. So I've had a few different cylinders on this car they're all Wilwoods and the front brakes the cylinder was a 0.625 millimeter piston size and the rear was a 0.725 now I thought I, was, I couldn't get any pressure on the back of the, the rear brakes so I went it sounds strange but you go smaller on bore size to get more pressure so anyway I swapped the um I had the bias, there's an adjustable bias mob here, which you can adjust on that mob when you rotate at the, it just moves the um, bar over to put more bias on, that's the front cylinder and that will be the rear cylinder, that one there. So I was putting it all on the rear cylinder, trying to get some pressure on that and um, still not getting enough. And I thought that because I had so much of the bias on this side of the tube to give more pressure to the rears, it was kinking and not allowing the front cylinder to return out. So I replaced the rear cylinder with a 0.625, which is the same as the um, front one. So the front and rear were the same, which was unusual because the rears are usually bigger to get less pressure, so you have more brake on the front. Anyway, so. Um, after doing that, the brakes locked up again. I'm so glad it happened last night because it could have happened on the way to the first stage and that would have been a disaster. And I've got to have good brakes. You've got to have confidence in your brakes. So I'm going back to the brand new cylinder I bought, which was a 0.625, is that one. That's the 0.625 that I've removed, which I think has a problem with it. I know a few people have had problems with cylinders. So, and they seem to have changed the cylinder. There's different markings on it. That's 0.625 written on the side. This one hasn't, it's got a tiny little mark at the back with the, so there's slight, slight differences in it. So that's the one I've just bought that was on the rear. So I'll put that on the front. This one is the one I took off the rears. Point, oh, it's 0.7, not 0.725. I had a 0.725 before. Um, so I'm gonna stick this back on the rears I'm going to um, put the bias in the middle and I'm going to take this out. That has been in the car since I've built it. I've always had it on fully open, but I've never got enough pressure to the rear brakes. So I'm thinking there might be an issue with that. I didn't buy it new. I bought a car and it came with the car. It wasn't even plumbed in. So, it, it you know, it's, um, it's there's a good chance that's, that's not working as well as it should do. So I'm going to take that out and then join the um, pipes together to make a continuous pipe, then bleed them all. So that's the front in. I'm just about to put the rear cylinder in. But I think what I've got is, um, I might replace this pipe. That's the pressure switch that does the brake lights. So I might replace the pipe, just have one joint here, cut it and join it. And then if I do need to put one of these in, which I can't see I do, the only reason I would do is if the back brakes work too well now, which means that this was no good anyway. I'm, I'm trying, I've, I'm trying to think laterally about why it's not working and what I can do. So that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna take that out, put the 0.7 on the rears, 0.625 on the fronts, and I'll try that and see how that works. And fingers crossed, hopefully that'll be all right. I've got a few other bits, as you can see, the door's not on. That's because it's quite badly dented from the little spill I had at the last rally. So 
So it's, it's um, got a few dents in it. I'm gonna, uh, I've got a friend who's a panel beater and sprayer and he's kindly offered to help uh, just knock a few out. I'm not bothered about having dents in it, but I'd rather they weren't as big as they are. Um, yeah, the, the side, we took a, a bit of impact. That's the fiberglass bits on the side. Uh, the bonnet, got a bit. I've got a little scratch on the windscreen, which you can't really see. But that one there. Um, but all in all, a bit of a gouge on the wing. It's a rally car. I'm not a, it's not a show car. I don't mind a few scratches and dents here. I can put stickers over them or whatever. But because of the, the graphics on it, if I respray the door, I'm going to have to get more stickers, which I don't even know where I got them from now. They were specially made. So I don't really want to go through all that again. Um, it might not be too much diff um, too difficult, and it will probably would be good to have a spare set, but I don't really want to. If I can just knock some dents out and make it look a bit better, then we'll worry about that later. Right, I'm going to get the rear cylinder on. Right, I'm just disconnecting the um, bias, the pressure reducing valve, and I've realised that I had... A pressure switch this is to do the brake lights when the um, pedals press down the pressure builds up makes contact but in the it's, it was fitted this way up and I'm thinking now that it's quite possible that when you're bleeding the brakes you're gonna get a lot of air in the top of that so I think I might be better off fitting it that way upside down so the fluid should run down into the void where the pressure switch is um, that could have been the cause of a few more problems as well the handbrake worked excellently because that's past this and past the reducing valve the hydraulic handbrake so I'm gonna take this out as well uh, turn this upside down as well I mean What I've done is um, I've put a new pipe, piece of pipe. I didn't want to have two joints like this. Um, this is a compression fitting with olives inside. So you tighten up and the, uh, the olive will compress onto the pipe. So that is just a straight cut in there. Um, I wasn't sure about using compression fittings, but if you do braided hose, it's a compression fitting onto a plastic pipe. So I'm... Um, and I'm not a fan of braided hoses. I think you still get a bit of swell in them, whereas you're not gonna get any with the copper pipe. And the copper pipes, the connections are pennies, 10p a connection or something, whereas on the braided hoses they're 10 quid. It costs a lot of money to do braided hoses. I have got braided hoses going to the um, flexible bits where it needs braided hoses, but I'd rather have solid pipes here. Anyway, the that's the straight cut there with a compression fitting. Um, that's the bit I cut off. That's the bit I've made onto that goes into the um, pressure sensor. So I've just got to extend those cables and bring them down to there so the brake lights work. Um, and hopefully, as I'm bleeding it, um, it will be low, low pressure. So as the fluid's running through, it will go into the void and fill that up. In theory, um, there's more chance of filling it up upside down than there is the other way up, well, the right way up now, but uh, when it was upside down. So now I've got to bleed the brakes. Hopefully that won't be a drama because I know sometimes it can be a bit of an issue with the air going through the handbrake assembly, uh, especially when the pipes go up and back down again. So I'm changing the brake fluid as well. We're going Motul, can't really see, Motul 660 because it's got a high boiling point and I'll just give it a go and see, um, and flush all the old stuff through. Well, I'm bleeding the rear brakes. I've done the other side. Um, it's loads of air came out of the other side. I haven't got any air out of this yet. I'm a bit limited on brake fluid. I'm waiting for some to arrive from the UK. Hopefully that will come here soon, but I've got, I've got a bit left. So hopefully I can get like uh, the rears done and start on the front, maybe get all the front done, hopefully, but it shouldn't really take as much front. Here we go. Um, I bred the, bled the brakes. I only had half a litre of that um, 660 Motul brake fluid. But 
it feels like quite a firm pedal. But what I have noticed is the handbrake is going back. I mean, it's still solid when it stops, but I don't remember it coming back that far. But it just seems so solid when it does get the fluid in it. I think the best thing is to take it for a spin and see. So hopefully, what I'll do is take it for a spin and I'll re-bleed all the brakes um, just to make sure. You never know, bubbles might move around when you're using it. Give it a bleed and see how it is then. I'll see how it feels. I'm hoping that I haven't got too much rear brake now. So fingers crossed, this is disconnected. So that should be, that could have been a problem. The brake light switch, which I've got to wire up now, that um, could have been an issue. Hopefully that's full of fluid now. So yeah, we'll, we'll take it out for a drive and see. Unfortunately, the brake pedal's a little bit lower than it used to be. It's still easy to get to one pedal. Um, that's because I chopped the end off the the front brake cylinder was on the rears, so I had to cut it down slightly. So it's slightly further in. I could wind it out more, but I want more threads in the cleavers. So we'll see how it feels when I drive it. Right now, the um, cylinders have turned, uh, changed over. The brakes seem to work work well. I've just got to um, adjust the bias, the front and rear. What I've done is previously there was quite a bit of movement in the bias rod. So really the bias was going all over the place. And also it was putting these um, cylinders at funny angles. So what I've done is I've just cut some steel and used them as like washers it'll just stop this from moving about so much and keep the angle straight so what I'm going to do now is drill some holes in the bottoms and um, put some tie wire or something to get if I'd not cut the slot in them um, next time I take a cylinder out I will do some more steel without the um, just as in big washers without the slot in them. If to get the rod out, I have to undo one of the cylinders um, and then unscrew the rod all the way out, and it's a bit of a nightmare. I don't really want to. I might have to fiddle about the cylinders more anyway. If I've got to take it off, I'll swap them over onto the um, solid washers, but at the moment it'll do with the lock wire. I've put the um, washers on and lock wired them so I can't see that coming off but if it does it's, it shouldn't go anywhere and it's going to um, it should stop this from moving back and forth it's still got a bit of play in it so it's it's got a bit of movement and the um, yeah adjuster still works so that's probably better now so I'll tr try it out tomorrow Right, I've taken the um, the plunger out of the, this is the cylinder that was sticking on. Um, you can get rebuild kits, but I'm more concerned as to why it's why it's done. It was hard to get this this out. I had to give it a good whack, quite a few whacks on a bit of wood. Um, I spoke to Willwood, and they said sometimes it can score. It can get scored. And that can cause a few problems, but it looks quite good to could pour down there. Unless it's just the seal swollen up and lack of use, or I don't know. And buy a seal kit anyway and see, compare that old seal to the new one, and see what it looks like. The light bar's just been fitted. I'll uh, lights are on. That's full beam, normally, with the light bar. Wow. So that's just normal full beam. It's like a white light, but it's it's so much brighter than the full beam is. So, oh. Yeah, I think we've got, hardly well, any voltage drop. I would have thought it would have been more than, oh, all the lights are on there. I was going to say, I thought it would be more like 12 volts. There you go. 
try and put one and that's with the ignition on as well so yes i have to get the light bar on for scrutineering and then the light bar comes off again for the daytime stages you can leave it on but it's just more expensive if you crash and then it goes back on again for the evening stages so i'm pleased with that that's a different light bar to last year We're almost there, we're not far off it now, we've um, got two weeks to go. I'm, I'm quite confident at the moment, but I know that anything can go wrong. I've had my tyres put onto rims, I've got wets on rims, I've got some spare um, dry tyres. No one knows what the weather's going to be like at the moment. I've got a few little bits, I sort the tool bit out. I'm just going to put a piece of ply over there and a couple of wing nuts just to hold it all in place because it does get a bit bouncy. Um, I, I took it out for a drive last night and the brakes seem to be phenomenal even with the standard road tires on um they yeah they they work so fingers crossed hopefully with those washers in that's going to sort that problem out light bars on that's um it'd be nice to try it out on the road i've got to sort my tools out and bits and pieces but i think the car just a bit of tidying up to do um and we're just about there so fingers crossed Two weeks to go, well, week and three quarters. Um, hopefully there shouldn't be any other incidents. I can always poke and prod and find things to do, but we'll, um, hopefully I won't have too much to do.